Um, the other thing I want to make a quick question. Um, we've been talking about the, uh, the parking garage and the conference center. Who will own and operate the conference center? The conference center is owned by the Redevelopment Commission of the City of Fort Wayne. The, uh, the operational aspect is a split shared relationship with Hardball and the City of Fort Wayne. There are 70 dates that are reserved for the baseball. There are 10 dates under the terms of the agreement that are reserved by Hardball for events. The city has 10 dates. Then you go down the rest of the dates that are available to do uh, and to accept additional venues. So we will share. When there's city events, the revenue comes to us. When there are events hosted by Hardball, the majority of the revenue goes to them. But we, are, we have a, in place already an agreement as to how we will schedule events. And how much square footage is in that conference center? Do you know offhand? I think it's around 7,000 square feet. Not a, not a huge uh, venue, but one that can host business events, uh, luncheons, um, and, and things like that. Uh, I believe that 7,000 is the number that sticks in my head. I have one last request for you. This is something I'd like you to think about. Hopefully there could be support on council for this. Uh, and this is something we can work together on. You know, we've been into Harrison Square now for three years, 2006, 2007, 2008. I really think it's time for a public accounting of the public funds that have been spent on Harrison Square to date. You know, can you come back to us at some point in the future, maybe a month or two months from now, whatever, with, you know, giving us a rundown of the hard costs and soft costs. How much money has the community put into this to date? I think that would be important as sort of a benchmark. We can see what we've done and then look to the future and we can see how we're spending compared to what we've already done. And maybe even a timeline, Greg, right, about you know, what you see happening in the next two or three years. But I think, I, I don't know if council will agree with me on this, but I think it's important and timely to bring forth uh, you know, an accounting and see how much money we've spent today. When the project is done and we're after our home stand, I would love to come back and I would love to show the way in which the city of Wayne promised and delivered on bringing this project in under budget and on time uh, on the publicly financed portions of this. So I look forward to that. Um, it'll be uh, it'll be good for the citizens and you all to hear this, and I'll be happy to make the presentation because we are we are on track uh, to be in under budget on this project on the portions of the project that we were responsible for managing. When do you think? When would that like that report? likely come forward. If you don't mind, sometime um, early May, right after their, they come to their home stand and left, I can, we could do early May if that's okay. I'd okay. rather wait till the ballpark has been open. That's, and, that's fine. I, I, I just think it's important that we get that out there in the next few months, and that's, okay. I think, a reasonable timeline. But I do believe it's important for all of us to know what's happened to date. Um, I think Councilman Shoke then. Yeah. Greg, I raised this issue when the uh, hardball representatives were here. And I think we all agree there is a, a problem here. I'll have different perspectives on it. And that is that they are not going to be, um, they're going to be non performing for a period of time. They're not going to meet their deadline. Our the deadline that with they. With respect to the condominiums and the retail. The condo and retail, yeah. more than likely the that deadline was really is June in, first. In the quid pro quo with the city. That was what they were bringing to us in exchange for which we were handing this very handsome stadium from which they will take most of the revenues. It seems to me during that period of time when they really haven't uh, responded with something for the city that we maybe should be considering some kind of adjustment in the way the revenue stream goes. You say when they have events, they will get most of the revenue. I, I wonder if something that we should be looking at some adjustment here during that period. I'll, uh, I'll let uh, attorneys handle that. Uh, we have people who these are legal documents. Uh, we have been reviewing them continuously. Um, and uh, uh, as far as going in and changing the documents, um, uh, that, that would be a legal question. Well, you know, as Layman know, that when there's non-performance, there's some regress for the injured party. I assume there is. I assume that's built into the original contract in some way. The city has got some form of protection, I assume, built in those contracts. Liz and then Tom. Go ahead, Liz. I've already spoke, but I'll speak after you. Um, since you mentioned that group, I just think that this parking group, it's not an official group, but I think what's significant um, is that there are every stakeholder downtown, and, and, and if they have not been invited, they it's not by design. Um, 
in parking enforcement, the police, uh, the Grand Way, the embassy, <coughs> the botanical gardens, the, some of the churches, whatever, are all coming together to address that thinking that the perfect storm will happen, that when the tin caps start playing, there will be all kinds of parking issues. And, and I say that because actually, uh, obviously you're not a member of that group yet since you are not residents here yet, but you should probably sort of be part of the loop because there's a lot of planning. It's very informal. Um, there's no one who's officially a decision maker, but as I said to someone today, it's probably the most efficient group in terms of identifying issues and addressing them without any uh, agendas moving forward. And and the point is not just the parking, and, and I even though they've never addressed the issue of competition, and I actually thought I had read that the Grand Wayne and, and uh, Parkview Fields have an agreement in terms of meeting space. But the point is, everyone is anticipating that they are all busy. And the best thing about Harrison Square and the project is that other things are happening downtown. And there are other issues, whether it's signage or safety, policing, security, ingress, egress, that are all being looked at now that might not have been. And so you should be a part of that. Um, you're not there yet, but you will be, and we thank you for continuing on because a lot of businesses have given up in this economic climate. But I do think that that we all need to support this project because we are, the city is very committed to it financially, but also going forward, what's interesting is all the other stakeholders downtown, the library, uh, anyone downtown is being asked to participate and look at their own mission and and what they can do to enhance and work together and so you know i invite you to i think dan o'connell from the fort Wayne visitors and rich davis with the did they all participate um, i would invite you to, to get their contacts but i really think that's one of the, the highlights uh, my short term and council is seeing that all these entities are coming together without being paid or without um sort of all by themselves so <clears throat> uh, just real quick, um, Greg, if we do come under budget, like you're saying, then do we just uh, uh, basically create the bond that we need for the money, or is there an excess of money that would go into the general fund, or where would that well, money go? Based on the fact that it's uh, you know, $50 million, right. take, uh, I don't want to leave the impression that there's significant dollars, right? I understand. We're that. carrying contingencies to the very end of this project. We have some choices to make at the very end, some, some added richness that we might do, but the bottom line is is that we've managed the project so that we didn't come into a situation where at the end the project's not done and the money's gone. So uh, as far as having a, a great deal of money left, if, if, if we're not spending it just because it's there, right? If it's there, it'll be there. You're being service, right? Yeah, but I mean, I just I, I I appreciate what Councilman Smith is saying, you know, from from that vantage point. Sure. And I think there's, you know, it's public information and it should be said, and it's fine. I think May is a good time. I think all in all, it's going to be a great situation. I, I personally, you know, I just want to thank you for the commitment that your, you know, your process is going forward as as quickly as you possibly can, can get it done. And I, we really do appreciate that aspect of it. I mean, from my perspective, you know, you're not doing 15 other projects, but you're gonna still commit to, to doing one here. That's a pretty, uh, that's a pretty huge uh, attribute to you. And we really do appreciate that you sticking with it. So. Well, we're excited, as I said, I- It's a, I mean, I saw the drawings, it's a beautiful hotel. It's, it's, uh, it's, you know, we, we just, we just wish we could control that last component of it on the debt financing and uh, but again I think we're in as good a position as anyone that you know uh, to, to take take uh, advantage of that when it does come back and, and we have a ray of hope here. So. I would agree with you on that aspect of it. 